Hi, my name is Dr. Michelle Cochran, and I'm the Medical Director at the Neuroscience and TMS Treatment Centers and the National Center for Hope and Healing. Today in this video, I'm going to demonstrate what is called the Modified Beam Method for locating the target when treating depression with TMS. I am the current president for the Clinical TMS Society. This is an international professional organization that is dedicated to optimizing clinical practice, awareness, and accessibility of transcranial magnetic stimulation. I was prompted by colleagues in this organization to create this training video. My hope is that by demonstrating this method in this video, that clinicians, technicians, and others will be able to replicate the heuristic easily for patient care. So I advise that you gather a few things to help you as you practice this method. The first would be a volunteer to sit as the patient. It would also be helpful to have a volunteer to act as your TMS treater, your coordinator, or your general assistant for this process. It would be helpful to have a dry erase marker, a soft measuring tape that would read in centimeters, a computer, some paper, a calculator, and then some sort of writing utensil. I would recommend having your practice patient sit in a chair. You should stand around them and then have your assistant or TMS treater nearby with a computer, paper, pen, and a calculator. It would be helpful to have your assistant open the website, clinicalresearcher.org. If they scroll down just a bit to what is called the BEAM F3 locator program, and click on the web-based interface. When the screen opens, you will notice that the interface is titled BA9, BA8, BA43 Location System, and then has the two researchers' names. BA refers to Broadman Areas 9, 8, and 43. Please note on the screen that they'll show you here three measurements which you'll need to obtain and enter for the program to render the calculation you need. The researchers that created this freeware have saved busy clinicians like myself significant time by putting these calculations into a simple program. Now I'm gonna show you an image that is an image of the 1020 system. And I show you this because I'm going to refer to it multiple times. I want you to look at the web-based interface and note that despite the order that is shown in the screen, I advise measuring the Nasian to Innian calculation first. I recommend this because you need to know the vertex in order to make the tragus to tragus measurement. And if you're going to measure from Nasian and Innian to get the vertex, you might as well measure it out the first time and go ahead and fill in the blank. So get out your measurement tape and measure from the patient's nasian to their inian. And you'll see the nasian here as the distinct depressed or dipped area between the eyes, and it is superior to the bridge of the nose. And we'll measure from the nasian through the midline of the skull to the back of the skull to the inian. The inian is the most prominent projection of the occipital bone at the posterior inferior part of the skull. Some patients this will feel like a small bump, others it will be a very large over a centimeter long or even two centimeters long. Next you will have your assistant enter the nasian to any measurement into the blue area on the web base interface. It is helpful if while your measuring tape is in place, multiply the nasian to any value by 0.5. This number will equal your vertex. For reference, this vertex also refers to CZ on the 1020 system. The C standing for central and the Z standing for zero. Here you will see us marking CZ on the patient's head with a dry erase marker. Also, it is helpful if while your measuring tape is in place, 
If you multiply the Nasian to Ennian value by 0.1, which will allow you to get two important points of information which you will need for the circumference of the head. If you multiply the Nasian to Ennian by 0.1, you'll get the frontal polar zero and the occipital zero, FPZ or OZ respectively. These marks are used for the circumference measure later, and they're also very helpful when marking X, which we'll show you later. You'll mark 10% of the Nasian to Ennian value, FPZ, and 10% up from the Ennian in the back, which would be your OZ. Now what we'll do is find the measurement from the preauricular point on one side through CZ or the vertex to the preauricular point at the other side. In the web-based interface, it, this measurement is called tragus to tragus here as number one. And again, you'll notice that we measured from one side through the vertex to the other. For reference, the tragus is right in front of the ear canal. I like to mark the tragus. This helps me later when I'm determining the circumference. A couple of calculations here can help you as well. If you find the left preauricular or tragus spot to CZ and multiply it times 0 0.20, this value will equal the distance from CZ, the vertex, to C3. And if you mark C3 along the preauricular CZ line, C3 is highly concordant with the thumb on the patient's motor strip. This image shows us marking for C3. Now if you use the left preauricular to CZ measurement and multiply that times 0.1, this value will equal the distance from the preauricular point to T3. You mark T3 and this value will be used for the circumference. Now, we'll show this again. If you use the left preauricular to CZ measurement and multiply it times 0.1, this value will equal the distance from the preauricular to T3. You mark T3, and this measurement will be used for the circumference. Then in similar fashion, measure the right preauricular to CZ, multiply times 0.1. This value equals the distance from the preauricular to T4. It is really important here not to presume that the preauricular to CZ measurement is the same on both sides, as individual heads are generally not perfectly symmetrical. So now the third measurement that is required is your circumference on the web-based interface. So you have already made your marks of FPZ, T3, OZ, and on the opposite side, T4. So with your assistant, and often a hand of the patient, you can use your soft measuring tape and line up your points, F, P, Z, T3 on the left, O, Z in the back, and T4 on the right. And you can get your circumference. So you'll enter your final circumference measurement into the web-based interface and press calculate. The coordinates of X and Y will be figured by the Beam F3 web-based interface. It's very helpful to record these calculations for later reproducibility. It is important to know that you will not be using Z as this is for TDCS, not TMS. So you'll mark the patient's head with X and then with Y. And so let me show you a figure. This would be us marking X. You'd start the zero point at FPZ and go along the circumference line to determine X. I like to mark X along the tape. And then you would use the adjusted Y that you see here in this center section 
and the y measurement is from the vertex towards x. Here in this example, you see the zero starting at, with your measuring tape, on CZ towards X. And here you see a small dot where we place this adjusted Y or modified Y. Certainly you could use this calculation to find a right-sided treatment if you were choosing for some reason to treat on the right side. What you would do was with the X measurement, instead of measuring to the left along the circumference, you'd measure to the right, and then your Y measurement would come from your vertex down towards your right-sided X. So what I've showed you in this video is how to use the web-based interface on clinicalresearcher.org to determine a modified beam. And this is the modification that Arsalanir Montadati's group found and was published in Brain Stimulation Journal that is highly concordant with neuronavigational targeting. If you had previously downloaded a beam calculator, you could certainly still get the adjusted Y. What you need to do is just add 0.35 centimeters to your Y calculation with that downloaded uh, beam calculator. I find the easiest way is to just use this web-based interface because the calculations are already included. So just for reinforcement here at the end, I'm going to show you one last image and then go through all the calculations very quickly. To begin with, you'd measure from the nasian to the inian. You'd take half that calculation, which would give you CZ, mark CZ. You'd take 10% of the nasian to inian measurement, and that would give you your OZ, and FPZ. It's important to mark all three of those points. Then you'd measure tragus to tragus through CZ. You'd measure on the left, the preauricular or tragus point to CZ and multiply times 0.2 or 20% of the calculation. This would give you C3, which is where your motor threshold would be. 10% of the preauricular or tragus to CZ measurement on the left would be T3, and 10% of this same measurement on the right would be T4. You'd measure their circumference, which is FPZ, T3, OZ, and T4. Enter these calculations into the web-based software to get X and the adjusted Y. And remember, if your interface doesn't show the adjusted Y, just add 0.35 centimeters to Y. So I hope that this video has been helpful. I hope that it's easy to use. I hope you can practice it some with your team so that you'll be polished. And I hope that it will help improve your clinical outcomes as you're treating depressed patients with transcranial magnetic stimulation. Thank you.